It's plushy time once again. Actually, plushy time almost never stops for me until I crash. And I did crash. I've been reading basically the whole time and waiting for some fabric to arrive. And now it has arrived and I finished my book. Welcome to part 5 of making all the Wings of Fire characters into plushies. As many as I can mentally handle at least. I have my drawing tablet back after losing a lot of work. So I can put away MS Paint until next time fruit related tech giant irritates me by creating a product designed to break in just three years that has an inaccessible soldered and glued together internal compartment rendering it nearly impossible to fix yourself without forking over 1000 big bucks. Anyways, the rules of this challenge are fairly simple, but there is unfortunately a bajillion characters, some of which are barely relevant to the story and others of which I will die a hater of. This is the current leaderboard for side character bonus wild rounds, and I just gotta say, my dad was reading the comments on my last video that I was tallying up, and he asked who Gariel was. I thought he was the one who Glory melted with her death spit in the second book, but he's not. He's the one that's in love with Crystal. And then we scrolled down a bit and realized somebody did vote for the one Glory melted. So, okay, both of them, I guess. Today we're moving on from the B characters. Don't panic. I have plans for Bumblebee. I've kidnapped her from the B category like Cricket did from the nest. Our first C name dragon, you might not know him, it's Calamity, my talky character who is a Nightwing with Icewing blood, but who is not a self-insert because I look like this. I think the hairstyle alone is enough to diagnose me with Rainwing, but you know, look, it's meant to be the strawberry, you know, like, like that one, like, I'm sure you get it. Will this hairstyle last until I get to Darkstalker before it washes out? Anything is possible. When you're making dragons with unique parts like hybrids, just draw out your pattern on some paper, it'll be fine. The trickiest part of plushie making is creating patterns, and the hardest part of pattern making is creating 3D shapes. But I say that knowing pattern making has an ability to simply get worse the more specific you try to be. Trying to create gussets? That's a pain. But if you try to create a gussetless shape using darts, then also good luck holding that in your brain as a 3D object. In any situation, you're doomed. But the love of dragons might propel you forward if that's what you like. I've kind of always been obsessed with dragons. I even made this enormous Chinese dragon so that the very first thing any guests see upon walking into the house is dragon. I wrapped it in fairy lights for Christmas, but now these are never coming off. That giant dragon was an art project, by the way, that I completed for my final year of high school art. And it didn't fit in the low-budget gallery space because our school didn't have a gallery, we had a hallway. And so I had to edit into a photo of a real gallery space because the teacher would not let up on the criteria of it being in a gallery. And I banged my photo editing software together and then got criticised for the gallery pictures not looking the same. And then I got a B for it. Somewhere in the world, my art teacher is off doing whatever it is she does blissfully unaware that I have been sending cosmic mental daggers at her for the last two years because I am still salty. And now we turn Calamity right side out. Also, when you are pinning the forehead around the nose, try your best to make the corners sharp, otherwise the head shape blurs into a circle. Even if that means you go pin stabbing crazy. I might not be stellar at explaining things, but I strongly believe you can figure it all out by keeping on trying. That's how I feel about these dragons, and I made the patterns, so... I already mentioned they're not a self-insert, because if I was going to draw a dragon self-portrait, it would look like this, and it would shoot fire! So cool! Anyways, I made them because I had a dream about being a Nightwing assassin whose scales were very unusually warm and toasty. In this dream, I was a member of a band of Nightwing revolutionaries, trying to separate the Nightwings from the Rainwings, who had splintered off to live... somewhere. Whilst the Rainwing-ruled Nightwings lived underground in the rainforest. In this dream, I was an assassin who tricked his way into being accepted into the Nightwings, ruled by Queen Glory. I had been sent to... kill them or whatever, 
It was a dream, so I basically forgot this mission to go swimming in a river and attempt to fly, but instead discovered I was a great jumper in this dream. I was like a frog. Anyways, when I went into the hatchery of the Nightwings, they realized my warm scales can make eggs hatch faster, so they put me in charge of being the hatchery mobile space heater. My assassin master thought this was great because then I could destroy the eggs and cripple the false Nightwings far more than the original plan, but I refused in this dream, and we fought each other before she swore vengeance and limped off bleeding. This is basically the backstory of this OC of mine, except without dream wackiness. Even though my OC is a quarter ice wing, I thought he would have warmer scales, as if his own internal fire overcompensated for the frostiness of his relatives. And instead of fire, he breathes hot steam and smoke. I also decided they could attend Jade Mountain Academy too, because even if they aren't my self-insert, I have to do chemistry homework, so they should have to suffer the same. Also, this plushie was super hard to wash the blood off after I stabbed myself. This light grey just absorbs it like crazy. If you ever need to wash a handmade plush, you should wipe it with a damp towel. No matter how strong your stitching is, it's still handmade and could break. You could probably find a way to clone me from a few of my plushies. I stab myself very rarely, considering the amount of needles I'm holding, but rarely is not zero. The band-aid has actually been to cover the burn mark I got from Battle Winner. It does not feel good when I stab that with a needle. Maybe the universe is telling me to invest in a thimble. Anyways, making hybrids as plushies is quite fun, and I have some tips. Other than making extra pattern pieces on paper, which is a little bit obvious, but you know, Encouragement to have the confidence to go crazy as you want with whatever dragon you like and just make the most rainbow, most magical, most scene core all wing OC that just breathes lasers. Go for it. But my actual advice is each body pattern has particular body gussets. Gussets here would be the spine and the chest and mixing body patterns with different gussets will not work as each one is measured out specifically. Hybrids are kind of the most interesting part of Wings of Fire to think about and speculate on as a dragon enjoyer, and I hope in the future there are more canonical hybrids, especially point of view hybrids, because the tug between both tribes is something they went into during Darkstalker's book, but I'd love to see an even greater disparity between both halves of their blood, like a sea wing and a sand wing for instance, because sand wings don't like to get wet all that much, and sea wings... <laughs> You know, it'd be a super cool thing to see explored in a character. To be honest, Sandwings and Seawings are kind of the hardest tribe for me to picture being mixed together unless they just look like a beach. But the more hybrids the better, and the more interesting in my personal opinion. Calamity is done! Finally a marketable plushie of my PNG Dragon YouTube guy. The marketable plushie thing is quite funny because my name is Peter in, like, real life. Thank you to my patrons. All my patterns are for free through Patreon. You can download them and cut them out. Thanks for sticking around for a more chill video. Alright, lick and some scrib.